hello and welcome back so we are looking into the bell drives so up till now we have seen the content as such for the bell drive starting with the flexible and rigid drive then the application of this bell drive then we have seen the advantages and disadvantages of the bell drive after that we have seen the some basic cross sections of the bell drive and uh, the open belt drive and its length of belt and angle of wrap and cross belt drive and its length of belt and angle of wrap after that we have seen the importance of belt tensions and now we will see the centrifugal tension so as so here we can see uh, this is a pulley and over this pulley a belt is passing so as the belt is having certain mass so this mass will be producing a centrifugal force in the outward direction and the magnitude of the centrifugal force is given by mass into acceleration where m is the mass which can be calculated by b into t cross section of the belt and rho density of the belt per unit length and uh, v square by r is the acceleration so m v square d phi will be nothing but the small element of centrifugal force acting over the belt in the outward direction so if we make the uh, force analysis of this so this is tension on tight side and this is t plus dt and if we resolve these forces along the horizontal and vertical directions so finally we will get the relationship between the tension on tight side and slack side so that is what is the belt tension ratio so this is equal to t1 minus mv square upon t2 minus mv square is equal to e raised to mu into alpha where t1 is the higher tension side and uh, t2 is the lower side tension m is the mass per unit length of belt and v is the velocity of belt while mu is the coefficient of friction between belt and the pulley and alpha is the angle of wrap of the smaller pulley in radians so now we will understand the concept of slip in a belt so if we consider s1 is the percentage of slip between the driver and the belt and uh, s2 will be the slip between the uh, belt and the driven so it is s2 here and v is the linear velocity of the belt so initially we will write v is equal to pi d1 n1 by 60 minus pi d1 n1 by 60 into s1 by 100 so this is the velocity of the belt okay and this is the velocity of the input pulley minus this much is the slip occurring between the input pulley and the belt so finally you will get this particular velocity v so this can be simplified as this pi d1 n1 by 60 is taken outside as a common so in bracket it will be 1 minus s1 by 100 so this is the equation number 1 now similarly the velocity of the belt passing over the driven so this is the pi d2 n2 by 60 so this is the velocity of the belt uh, pulley on the output side so this will be equal to v which is the velocity of the belt minus velocity of belt into s2 by 100 so this much is the amount of slip which is going to occur when the power or the velocity is being transferred from belt to the output pulley so finally velocity which will be received on the output pulley will be equal to v into in bracket 1 minus s2 by 100 so from uh, the first equation and this particular second equation now if we make use of these two equations you will find out that n2 by n1 will be equal to d1 by d2 into in bracket 1 minus s1 plus s2 by 100 it means we will find out that the speed ratio on the, of uh, output and input pulley will be dependent on diameter ratio multiplied by 1 minus this particular slip so if i consider the thickness of the belt also into consideration then n2 by n1 will be equal to d1 plus t upon d2 plus t into in bracket 1 minus this total slip s by 100 was s1 is the sleep on input side and s2 is the sleep on the output side so total will be the s similarly now we will see uh, in terms of larger pulley speed by and smaller pulley speed will be equal to smaller pulley diameter plus thickness upon larger pulley diameter plus thickness it will make it 1 minus s so where ns and nl are the rotational speeds of the large and the smaller pulley respectively and yes the belt slip and t is the thickness of the belt so rotation of the belt drive is given by p is equal to t1 minus t2 into v now we will also try to understand the concept of 
elastic creep and initial tension in the belt. So first to understand elastic creep, uh, we will consider that the presence of friction between pulley and the belt causes differential tension in the belt. And this differential tension causes the belt to elongate and contract and create a relative motion because there is a tension on one side and there is a uh, tension on tight side and tension on slack side. So there are two different tensions so that differential tension will cause elongation and contraction and therefore create a relative motion between the belt and the pulley surface. So this relative motion between the belt and the pulley surface is created due to this phenomena and that is known as elastic creep. So this elastic creep can be considered in these speeds so n2 output speed by input speed will be equal to d1 by d2 into it, uh, into e plus in under root sigma 2 upon e plus sigma 1 where uh, stresses in belt are indicated by sigma 1 and sigma 2 and m is the modulus of uh, e is the modulus of elasticity of the material so sigma 1 is the stress on tight side of the belt and sigma 2 is the stress on the slack side of the belt so let us understand that uh, the belt always has an initial tension when it is installed over the pulleys so this initial tension is same throughout the belt length when there is no motion but when you start the motion of the drive so tight side tension is higher than the initial tension and slack side tension is lower than the initial tension so when the belt enters the driving pulley it is elongated and when it leaves the pulley it contracts hence the driving pulley receives a larger length of belt than it delivers and the average belt velocity on the driving pulley is slightly lower than the speed of the pulley surface. On the other hand, driven pulley receives a shorter belt length than it delivers. So the average belt velocity on the driven pulley is slightly higher than the speed of the pulley surface. So using this concept, we will understand the initial tension which is required in the belt. So let us determine the magnitude of this initial tension in the belt. So tight side elongation is proportional to the tight side tension T1 minus Ti and the slack side contraction is proportional to Ti minus T2. So where this Ti is the initial tension in the belt. So since the belt length remains same over the pulley arrangement that is the elongation is same as the contraction and therefore we are equating this elongation is equal to contraction we will get initial tension Ti is equal to T1 plus T2 by 2. Now we will try to determine that if you have to transmit the maximum power through a particular belt drive then what is the condition for that. So uh, the power is to be required to be differentiated with respect to velocity to get the, it, the condition for the maximum power transmission and the maximum tension in the belt is uh, three times the centrifugal tension. So T max will be three times Tc this is nothing but a relationship that we will obtain by using this particular condition of maximum power transmission and you, we know that the centrifugal tension is Tc is equal to mv square so we can also obtain what should be the velocity of the belt for maximum power transmission by using this particular relationship so that will be equal to uh, v is equal to in under root of T by 3m at the same time uh, it is required that uh, there should be calculation of the stresses induced in the belt so generally belt is or the belt cross section is related to a tensile stress so we will be considering the sigma t tensile stress for the calculation of the belt stress so sigma t is equal to force upon area now the force on the particular belt is nothing but the tension that is maximum tension the belt as t and the cross section area is b into t so b is the width of the belt and t is the thickness of the belt Similarly, we can find out the bending stress that will act on a belt. As this particular belt is passing over the pulley, it means if we consider the pulley as a circle like this and the belt is passing over this particular pulley. So, the belt is coming like this straight and it is being bent over this particular pulley and it is passing like this. So, uh, there will be bending action of this particular belt over this particular diameter of the pulley and therefore we are using the equation of bending moment that is m upon i sigma by y e by r so if we consider the cross section of this belt over here so we will find out that uh, this is nothing but the neutral axis of that particular belt cross section and uh, 
why if you have to find out so this is actually having the this belt is having particular thickness t okay so if this is the t belt thickness t then uh, this particular distance from the neutral axis up to the top point of it that will be equal to t by 2 so that is what is noted here y is equal to t by 2 now band radius r will be nothing but this radius of this particular pulley r and r is equal to d by 2 where d is the diameter of this pulley and the total tensile stress in the belt then uh, can be calculated by addition of the sigma t and sigma b so let us calculate first of all sigma b so sigma b can be calculated by using this e r and y so e into y by r will be nothing but sigma b so y is equal to t by 2 and uh, r is equal to d by 2 so this 2 2 will uh, cancel out and finally you will get the sigma b is equal to e t by d so this is bending stress and this is tensile stress so addition of this will be nothing but the total stress acting on this particular belt so it will be sigma t plus sigma b and accordingly then we can make the design of the belt so here we will stop and thank you for listening to this particular video